welcome to episode four of the Final Fantasy Multiboxing Dungeon list? Playlist? I guess? I don't know what to call it. I guess it's a series. So I'm running every dungeon in Final Fantasy XIV and as a multibox group. And if you've been following along, you've noticed that I've used three Arcanists and a Marauder. Today I've got a little, something a little bit different for you. So this is Halatali. I don't know how it's actually pronounced. That's how I'm pronouncing it. And I'm not running that same comp. So I'm actually running a uh, Paladin tank, uh, two Bards, and a Conjurer healer, uh, which plays a lot differently. So you'll notice I don't have any debuffs on the target, and I'm actually doing uh, spam AoE cleave damage. So this group really shines in the AoE cleave department. There's three bosses in this dungeon. The second boss requires quite a bit of cleave, and I did try to do this on my summon on my Arcanist rather. Uh, the problem is that this dungeon level is level twenty, and I don't really have an AOE mechanic on the Arcanist. Like, there's no way for me to AOE at that level. So I'm basically taking I'm playing to the strong suit of. Uh, this job set and it's nice right because in Final Fantasy we get this kind of flexibility we can play different comps for different dungeons and still get gear towards our other job sets the gear isn't job set specific now I didn't slow that this is the first boss I didn't slow the video down here um, as you'll see and be it's because the the single target damage is pretty bad one thing I realized uh, at this point in the dungeon is that I wasn't actually macroing correctly so I had moved some add-ons and stuff around, um, not add-ons, but the UI configuration around, and I realized that I had actually lost my bard setup. So after this boss, I actually fix it, and I've clipped that out. But I, I, I still ran this at 100% just to, uh, so you could kind of see that. And you see it's kind of moving slowly. But this guy is essentially spawns these little things that head towards this fire. When it runs to the fire, it does AoE damage to the group. Um, it could overrun you, but it doesn't for me. So um, the Conjurer has amazing like AOE heals. Uh, so I'm really not worried about it. Uh, and then we take the fire to the next area. So the the annoying thing in this game is that we don't have like interactive mouse over. And we also don't like, it's really hard to get the mouse cursor to really line up the way you want it to. And the mouse cursor will collide with other things. Like there's actually a right click on player to inspect. So that's like annoying. So we're on our way to the second boss now. There's this objective to get these little, um, these hanging things. You can see I just pos uh, walked past it. So there's, there's five of these. You get them and then that essentially allows you to access the second boss. Um, but I'm just pretty much just cleaving everything down. Um, the, the cleave damage is crazy. These characters are also really well geared, so they're level 52, and I've got like full blue gear uh, from doing the job quest line. So I'm, I'm being scaled down to level 20, but I'm really well geared for my level. Probably better geared than I would have been if I had come in here at level 20. Like this was a little bit harder at level 20. And the second boss is actually, if you play every dungeon in, in line, so this is the first optional dungeon, it's not part of the main um, scenario quest line. Every other dungeon, like every other dungeon thus far has been, but this one is optional. And this one is actually also probably the first boss that we've run into that's been difficult. Uh, not really, not really, difficult's not really the right word. Uh, presents some level of challenge. And so you'll see it here shortly after we get all these chain wrenches down. But uh, this boss basically requires some level of burst AoE that my Arcanists simply don't have which is entirely the reason why I'm running this different job set for this dungeon. It's literally just for this boss. And uh, you'll see it's not an easy boss, but it's also not a required dungeon. So you could potentially skip this dungeon. And I even really kind of waffled on whether or not I wanted to do this dungeon as part of the series, but I do want to do the optional dungeons. Um, and so I did this one in order. I'll go ahead and slow this down to 100% and kind of talk you through the fight. So this fight, uh, really isn't that hard mechanically. Uh, it does kind of it does kind of give you a little warm up as to what's coming though. Everything's been pretty easy up until this point. This is the first boss that requires really any sort of finesse. So the fight starts off pretty simple. 
you do some base KOE. Uh, at 75%, he jumps to the middle and spawns these lightning sprites, and you, you pretty much have to blow these up. They do quite a bit of damage. They don't have that much health. The boss does target a random player and do this AOE spell that you have to not stand in. Um, so that's really the only movement here. But really the big thing is that you need to AOE these down because they actually do splash damage to your party. So you can see I'm actually having to do quite a bit of AOE healing here to make sure that my group is topped off, which I do pretty well. The, the Conjurer has really good AOE healing, and I actually think... Even if I was on my Arcanist, I don't necessarily know that my the healing setup for that job set would have been like super appropriate here. I definitely think that in the future, what what what's going to need to happen for specific dungeons is you're gonna want to bring different healing jobs, and because they all kind of play to different power sets. This specific healer is very good at AOE healing and has some pretty good single target heals, but it has no real passive healing, whereas. With the Scholar, which is the Arcanist healing uh, job, not really that strong of AoE healing. Very good passive healing, so it's it's really like nice for certain fights maybe that don't require a ton of AoE spam healing. But for the most part, you know, I think the Conjurer probably plays a little bit like better if you're you if like the Scholar is a little bit more unique. It is strong. But it takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, so yeah, as you can see, like this boss isn't very difficult. Uh, I did wipe on it a couple times. So um, I kind of forgot <laughs> how the fight really works. And I definitely wiped on it a few times. Uh, but it's not, it's not too hard to overcome. So the first time I completely forgot what the boss did. And I think I actually ended up pulling a trash pack with it. The second time I went through it, I forgot, just basically forgot that I needed to spam healing. Um, I haven't really run this comp in a few days. I've been mostly running the Marauder and Arcanist. So it was it was quite an adjustment to kind of switch back and forth between them. And that's kind of where I was at on it. Uh, and here we go into the last boss. So this last boss was interesting in the fact that it was a little bit different than the first time I did it. And I'm still not really sure I understand the mechanic fully well. So here in the beginning, we're just going to open up like on him like we normally would. And he's going to do this like fist to the ground thing this fist pummel it's coming up pretty soon there it is maybe not a fist pummel so he goes immune at this point and he spawns these fire guys from these little fire things now you're supposed to kill them and he, ju he drops that little aoe too that you have to avoid it looks like he gives you plenty of time to get out of it so there's these little fire things that spawn and i'm really not sure what gets him to phase and i'm also like not really coordinated enough or set up enough in order to handle these individually. So I pretty much just soak the damage from these. You can see my, my group's taking a bit of damage and I'm doing some AOE healing and it's it's really not like anything too scary. Uh, I'm even soaking the AOE that the boss hits out. So honestly, this is probably a tuning thing. I probably should have played this a little bit better than I did. The immunity thing threw me off because I've seen him cast that in the past, but I didn't I've never actually seen him go immune like that. And even throughout this fight, I don't really see that happen again. So, yeah, he does it again here. And at, th at this point, I'm a little concerned that it's going to keep happening because I don't know how to actually break him out of that phase. Uh, and so the fight just feels, like, really long, but also, like, not terribly challenging. And so I get the bright idea here to just go to the corner and just AoE them down as they come up. Uh, but I don't, I don't know that it actually plays out that well. One nice thing about the Conjurer healer, though, is that because it's, like, action-based and it's not passive healing, I don't have the, the Conjurer pulling random aggro like I do on the Summoner, or the Scholar, rather. So, the Scholar healer, it has, like, passive healing, and that, basically, when new things spawn, it, it pretty much just constantly grabs aggro. It's, it's actually pretty annoying. But yeah, I'm just, I'm just soaking the damage. And then at this point, he's at 60%. I don't think he really gets any new abilities at this point. What What is strange, though, is that he doesn't really phase again. So he, like, throws his fire mitts on, and I assume he's hitting me for harder now. He does his little AoE spell. The things come out, but he's still attacking, so maybe he phased, and it's just supposed to be harder because you can fight him. 
But I think it would actually be a little bit easier if you could just kite this guy around in a circle while you kill him. Uh, he doesn't have that much HP, so it's pretty easy. 